This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Video producer here with the uh, Indie Wrestling.us Psychic Media Services in the Pittsburgh area at Sorgatron Media Studios. Uh, and uh, this is the show where we talk with people uh, uh, in pro wrestling, in indie wrestling, around it, in all kinds of veins. And uh, we got a great one, uh, somebody from the old, old days of Wrestling Mayhem Show returning Jesus. once again. <laughs> uh, but uh, with first, please go check out all the interviews at uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look for the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcasts, and the video versions on the YouTube and Facebook pages for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And you can drop us a line with any questions for anybody coming up, as well as any suggestions on anybody we can talk to at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. And thank you so much, everybody that's supporting us at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. You guys are literally helping us keep the lights on here in Sorgatron Media Studios here in Beachview. Uh, but anyways, my guest this week, we've had on, he, he, he was, uh, uh, one of our old favorites from, uh, our, our, I say early, I, I keep saying this, right. But it really, you were like some of our first interviews on yeah. wrestling mayhem show. When we did interviews there, we talked about your Japan trip. We talked about other things. I think, I think you might've worn a monkey head at some point, perhaps. Oh yes. yes. Uh, I mean, there's, there's some of that floating around there out there too, but Marshall Gambino joins us. That's no, that's producer Missy. There we go. <laughs> Here on the show, thank you for joining us here in the studio. Always, man. It's why it takes so damn long to get me back on the show. <laughs> just, just saying, just throwing it is off. It, it's, it's a reunion tour now that we have the new studio for hey, the most part, right? It is nice, man. So, it is nice. Uh, but anyways, uh, so, you know, it's been a while since we've done this, so we're going to start over from scratch. And for people who maybe don't know Marshall Gambino, we'll get to know your question. Uh, what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Pro wrestling in general? Yeah. Um, I think it was six or seven years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember seeing uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. I, I don't, I don't remember who he wrestled, but I remember seeing him on TV. And then uh, I remember getting, <laughs> I remember getting on, jumping on the bed and doing the Snooker splash on the floor <laughs> and. Uh, didn't feel that great, but that was my like my earliest memory. I, I was like, hooked. I've been hooked forever. That was your first bump too, right? That was my first <laughs> bump. It was a hard bump too. Man. Yeah, it was a hard bump. That makes a lot of sense in retrospect now that I think about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Watching much of your career. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, awesome. So so you were just kind of hooked in that. This is what probably mid eighties uh, snooker, right? Uh, yeah, it would have been um, eighty seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you go from that to you know deciding you wanted to get into it? Always wanted to do. It. I, I think, you know, not that I like to admit it, but um, I was doing the backyard thing, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I just I had a. I always told my buddy, I said that's something I want to do, you know, and even if I fail at it or I suck, I still want to do it, mm-hmm. and I uh, just kept that in the back of my mind. I when I got out of high school, I was. Working in a local amusement park, and uh, I met uh, Bubba. Uh, was, Bubba the Bulldog. Bubba the Bulldog, yes. He was out there. And just briefly talking to him, he said there was a school starting up um, in the Hayes section of the city, and went down there, and it's kind of history you know, from there. Mm-hmm. And was this the uh, IWC's early yeah, school? Yeah, IWC, so it was when. Uh, and, uh, Shirley Doe and uh, Super Hentai ran it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would have been 2001, 2002, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, went down, checked it out, uh, seen what was going on. And at that time, um, Jason Gorey was training and uh, Mickey Gambino was in there training and uh, scoped it out. So I could do this and mm-hmm. started a couple months later. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, you're, you're from that collection. Was Shima around the, the, that Shima was that in my class, class as well? Yeah, yeah. He, he was in my class. Yeah. Of course, now DJ Z. DJ Z, yes. DNA in Mexico and wherever <laughs> these the days, place. right? Yeah. It's, he's, he's one of the most well-traveled guys at yeah. this point. Good. For, I mean, good for him. You know, he's. Mm. I, I, I knew when I first met him that um, he, he was going somewhere, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, uh, I don't want to make it sound kind of goofy, but not that I didn't try my hardest uh but you know things happen you mm-hmm. know uh, get married have kids uh, priorities change mm-hmm. you know so but it's good for djz man i was good to turn on tv and see him wrestling or something <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about so you, you came out of the 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 training uh academy and and i know when i first started going to iwc shows we became familiar with the uh Gam- gambino brothers moving company yeah. which i believe was kind of your was it your first your first kind of deal or um they they you know i, I had this idea of doing like this uh police gimmick you know because a lot of people had said that they remind me of the, i reminded them of the big boss man mm-hmm. um so we started that off it, it just didn't I, I mean i did i think one rumble uh up in franklin and then uh Kind of hooked up with Mickey, sitting around, didn't want, didn't know what to do. I, I I'd always wanted to be a tag guy. Mm-hmm. I, I I just I don't I don't like singles. I, mm-hmm. I love watching the tag and the psychology that goes involved and all that. Um, Mickey was kind of looking for the same thing, didn't know really what to do, uh, character wise or anything like that. And then uh, one night we were down at the school and uh, Shirley Doe was there, and um, he kind of put the, he's responsible for the Gambino Brothers Moving Company. Um, you know, there was more ideas to it. Um, mm-hmm. We didn't kind of fill it out. I mean, it was always under the, the disguise of, you know, a connected, you know, the mafioso type gimmick. And uh, so we, we ran with that. And it kind of worked out. I mean, it was hot as hell wrestling in Dickie's carpenter <laughs> pants. And, you know, maybe but, not the most, especially when they got to those outside shows. Those oh, my rough. God, man. You talk about sweating. I, I mean, you would just. <laughs> It was just dripping, you know, it's, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, then it kind of morphed into more of just a, a gangster, I guess, the mafia type gimmick. And then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it is where it is now. Yeah. It's kind of like gone through that kind of natural evolution over the years, but I, I think the peak of it certainly, um, uh, in my view was, uh, I think it was a base brawl when you guys came out in a limo and you had chest flexor and pump Ferrari currently in IWC yeah. As the belt polishers, and kind it. of as I, I guess you would think of as the Singh brothers today with uh, Jinder Mahal. Yes. Uh, they were they were your they were your Singh brothers. Yes, uh, yeah. I mean, it was funny because uh, you know a lot of people don't give Flexor the credit he deserves. Flexor has mm-hmm. been around a long time, and Flexor is yeah. very knowledgeable. And he, you know, and when we started out, it was we were throwing the ideas around. We just needed some cronies. Mm-hmm. and uh, Flexor just kind of ran with it, and it was, you know, we all fit, you know, and then we brought mm-hmm. on uh, Jimmy D, and mm-hmm. then Jesse, and um, or Vendetta. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was... Well, Vendetta, I believe, like, he basically had everybody's, like, Attitude Era's finish. Yeah, the gimmicks, yeah. I remember, right? Yeah. Like, something about, like, like, and I didn't, I didn't see the inception of that. I think I saw like the later half of that, yeah. where he was, like, dis- rediscovering himself or yes. something like that, so... Yeah. I mean, it, I... I you know, I miss those days. I mean, because mm. we had so much fun, you know, and back then, you know, it's a lot different today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some people seem to forget that. Yeah. You know, but uh, it, it was a, at this time, I, you know, the tag division seemed to be really hot with IWC. There was you guys, um, there was Cleveland Mafia, J Rock, and Raymond Rowe, who now is a New Japan. Yeah. Oh, I think he just dropped the belt, but. Uh, you know, New Japan Wrestling uh, Champion and Ring of Honor and everything, um, and and I, well, I think maybe Shima and uh, uh, Gory were a team at the time, probably. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there was these good. these insane four team scramble Scrambles. matches. That would be that would be it's kind of became the hallmark for you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, in all honesty, for a few years, that's what kept IWC running. Mm-hmm. You know, people wanted to see that, and Norm was. You know, Norm Connors at the time, he was smart enough to kind of push that and, and had a lot of fun with those, man. You don't see that today. I mean, it's it's for whatever reason. Uh, and there ain't really too many 
organic tag teams anymore out there. Mm-hmm. And it was just some of the best times, man. You know, there's nothing like smashing Ray Rowe in the head with a cookie sheet, you know. <laughs> but, uh, like, you know, that was kind of when we were in our stride. I think that was like 2008, nine mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it was so much fun. So much Talk fun. about those matches. You know, they, 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 you know, it's a lot of people involved. Uh, at least eight people, sometimes more. Um, I, I particularly remember Jimmy DeMarco coming out of a trash can at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and, yeah. he, and he did things like you know he you know and, and Jimmy was kind of the um, I want to say the run of the litter, I guess a little bit. It was how it was being played up, and he, he got yeah. a pin on Ray Rowe in one of these matches, and had the big I pinned Ray yes. Rowe shirt coming out on yes. somebody's shoulders. You know, yeah, he. I mean, talking about a guy that like, you know. He, when he first started, everybody was telling him he was like robotic, like, mm-hmm. and it was, you know, he kind of, you know, I, I, I don't think we had anything to do with him. I mean, you know, yeah, he worked with us for a little bit, but he kind of went on his own and boom, I mean, you know, went leaps and bounds. I mean, mm-hmm. another good guy that, you know, I wish was still around a lot. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, man. Like you don't, there was something special about those matches. Mm-hmm. Everyone like in, I I compare a lot of that to today because I've been in a few scrambles and different things in the last few years, and you take those and compare it to what now, mm-hmm. and I all you know back then you kind of just knew like like now it's like a train wreck, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And I I don't I don't know why that is. I mean, is it because guys don't tag a lot anymore? I I don't know, but um, back then like you you do those you didn't have to think. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, I know this, 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 this is what's going to happen. And now it's like, you sit there and you listen to a guy who caught 60 spots and you're like, Jesus Christ, like, you know, it's not about just that one person. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of funny. I haven't, I hadn't tagged with Mick in years and we were doing some stuff with RWA and I remember like talking to him in the back and, you know, we're, we're, we're going through things and it's like, we looked at each other and I said, can we still do this? Like, cause we haven't done it so long going out there. We hit, we do the match and we were like, yeah, we we're a little bit of, a little bit of ring rust, but we kind of knew each other where we were going to be. Mm-hmm. And then we did a match later on and it was at some other guys and it was like we're calling all this shit and we're just looking at each other like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? It's just, it's so, it's so different now. And, and maybe, I don't know. But I'm the old guy. <laughs> I am. I mean, I'm th- I'm 36 years old and some people, you know, they they think that I'm too old. Uh, mm-hmm. I am slowing down. I can't do like I used to do and you know. Is it a lack of concentration on tag wrestling cuz you don't hear too often, you know, guys saying, you know, coming out of school saying I I just want to do tag wrestling. Like it's very few and far between it seems these days. And th- uh, I agree. I, I mean, not that I think there was a ton of that even back then. No, I mean, it's just weird. Like you don't hear it. Mm-hmm. Like and it's it's like it's died again. Mm-hmm. Like when we started, there wasn't much tag team wrestling, right? And then we kind of, I felt like we kind of rejuvenated it for IWC, and you know, I think a lot of times the tag team matches were better than like the main events that were happening. Now it's like I don't know if it's guys because they want to like I'm a singles guy and I want all the the glory like I don't know like it's just really weird I, once again I'm the old guy <laughs> <laughs> um I want to talk a little bit about uh you know we we, we mentioned uh before you you went to Japan of course one of the times you were on we Talked a lot about with you and Mickey about that trip to Japan, mm-hmm. um, and we just recently talked to Super Hentai about his experiences too. Um, I know that was a big deal for you guys back then, and a, a hell of an experience. Can you tell us a little bit about how that occurred and and uh, that trip over there? Uh, you know, that was you know, a lot of guys. When you know when they get into the business, they have goals. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, it's working for WWE. Believe it or not, Mickey and my goal was not to get to that level. We were, we said we were happy. There was a couple of things that we wanted to do. One, be tag champions. Two, uh, have a cage match. Three, go to Japan. 
cage match and the tag champ thing happened, you know, pretty easily. Um, uh, Super Hentai Charlie Doe had connections um, with Mackie, who's over in Japan. Uh, and Mackie does some promoting and stuff. Um, we had asked, we had inquired about it. At first we inquired about it and it was like, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens down the road. Okay, cool. Um, and I was sitting in my home office one, it was like, it was like two in the morning one day. Like, and I get this message from Mackie and he was like, Gambino's coming to Japan. And I'm like, did you read something I didn't read? I mean, you know what I mean? He's like, no, he goes, we want you to come. And I'm like, okay. So then I'm sitting there. I'm like, this guy just asked us to come to the wrestle in Japan. And, uh, so getting everything on board and, and we, we relatively turned the trip around pretty quick. It was a, it was a three day trip. Like, but we had to leave. It was like, I think at the time he asked us, it was like two or three weeks out before we actually had to leave. Oh, jeez. So like with work and everything, getting everything figured mm-hmm. out, um, we could only go for the three days. So we head over and uh, it was pretty cool. We got to wrestle a uh, soldier who wrestled for IWC and it was his last match. He was retiring. So that was pretty special. Um, it was a good experience. I, everybody there was very nice uh it was just kind of surreal for us who were like hey we kind of did what we wanted to do i said mm-hmm. you know i remember sitting on the plane with him on the way back nick and i said what are we gonna do now like because <laughs> we're i mean if you, you get all your goals what do you want to do? You just quit like yeah like, yeah so you know we had talked about hey maybe one day we'll go to, go to hawaii we were just tossing shit out there and um yeah i mean it was I'd love to go back, Mm. you know, I'd love to go back, spend some more time there. It's a very nice country. Um, Just the whole experience. And that's just because Hentai had a very similar thing where his, his big goal was that Japan thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, he had an offer to to, to go with it. Um, Where did, where did the Japan kind of goal happen for you? Were you kind of a fan of that wrestling um, as you were kind of discovering things or just, you know, Having that ability to go visit. No, not so much. So, in all honesty, I didn't know anything outside of WWE and WCW mm-hmm. until I was 19. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't know that that existed. Right. I didn't even know. In all honesty, I didn't even know Japan wrestling existed. It was, I had only seen WCW, WWE. Um, I, I just remember when we were sitting down, and, you know, from Hentai talking and, and, and Charlie Doe talking about Japan and, meeting some of the guys that came over were like you know this this would be a pretty cool thing for us mm-hmm. you know to do to say that we do because there's not a lot of people that get to do that mm-hmm. you know especially back then um and especially like uh, i mean that's that's really big for somebody that will bring you over too yes so yes i mean you know and, and it was crazy like I, I always joke i said you know we got treated better there than we do here i mean we were treated like rock stars mm-hmm you know the Japanese culture. I mean, it. You know, they they would have bought the clothes off our back if we would have sold them to. I mean, you know, it, it was just crazy. And, and I didn't. I was never a big traveler. I I, I didn't like to travel. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like a thing. Okay. This is pretty cool. Let's see what else we can do. And even at least my personal life it was like, okay, let's go do things. Like let's go. You know, like I, for my honeymoon, I went to. Mexico and stuff, but never done anything like that. So that kind of helped open me up to new things and traveling. And mm-hmm. um, like I said, it was just an experience. I had nothing bad to say about that experience from from start to finish. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, yeah, I think you mentioned about you, you went through like all of your merch too. Yeah, we took a suitcase full yeah. of just merch. Yeah. Gone. Just they, <laughs> they bought. They, I think they'd have bought the suitcase too. If we, Jeez. I mean, it was crazy. It's just you know we. I didn't know, like, when we were, we got to the building, I was like, how are these people going to take us? You know, because we are a little bit different style. Um, but they, they loved it. You know, they, they were, they were cheering for us. And um, it was just, uh, planning a match was different. It took like an hour and a half to plan a match because <laughs> the, the language barrier. Mm-hmm. And that's like, that's something too, is, was really, you know, we were used to, planning a match out a certain way mm-hmm. that's what we were taught 
well, when you go with somebody that doesn't, you know, with some two of you guys that can't speak English or very broken English, you know, how the hell are you going to figure that out? And then it was like, I remember walking through it and it was just like, wow. Like it, I remember after the match, like there's nothing got messed up. Everything was good. We're in the back. And I remember saying, like, can you believe we pulled that off? Like, you know what I mean? Cause you're, <laughs> because you really don't know. And yeah. they were happy. And, yeah. you know, um, it, it, it's just a great place. I mean, it was like a, it's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing, you know? And Hawaii was kind of like that too. Mm-hmm. Like we, um, we got a connection through, uh, super hentai. Uh, there's a company over there, AZW. Um, and I think, is that the company? I remember a couple of Hawaii guys came here. Yes. Action well, zone. So. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We went over there. Um, I, and that's a little bit different story in a sense that I was going to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going there for vacation. Um, my wife and I, and, you know, kind of just sent a feeler out to them. Like, hey, I, I see you guys got a show. You know, interested. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, you're coming. They're like, well, yeah, we, we'd love to have both of you. And so I called up Mick and I was like, want to go to Hawaii and wrestle? And he was like, what? So, yeah, that was cool, too. And that's a whole different thing because I had already been to Hawaii once. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, you know, did the touristy thing. You know, we did all the tours and, like, where all the tours go. Well, this, when we went the, the second time, we were there as tourists, yeah, but the the one day was all wrestling, and we got a car and we went into like the interesting part of the town. You know what I mean? It's totally different. So you see like the culture really full in effect. And um, once again, the people were great there. Everybody was great. We wrestled two huge dudes, like uh, they're like the Braun Strowman to our, you know, uh, uh, Callisto. Mm-hmm. But it was like, but it was fun, you know, and. and you know, that was another thing we're like you know i remember after that we look at each other again we're like can't believe we just did this you, you know i mean really honestly two schmucks you know from pittsburgh are they gonna but it was great you know mm-hmm. and i still talk to some of those guys every once in a while like you know but uh, i don't wrestle that much anymore so. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah talking about that you know we, we mentioned a little bit you mentioned you're working with rwa a bit uh, but always, of course, a stable with IWC, even even still today. Um, and that was definitely, uh, even that seems like it was a different experience, too. And I know I, I know we talked about hentai, but he seems to have a little bit more fun down there. <laughs> and I know I know you, of course, fan interaction seems to be a thing uh, <laughs> with that promotion. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not yeah. to get too deep into that. But uh, I don't know. They're, I guess, like anything times change mm-hmm. you know what was cool yesterday is not cool today mm-hmm. um there came a point when in all honesty iwc really the well, they went they were going in a different direction and uh i still wanted to wrestle and uh you know i i, I called up Derek and just kind of inquired about it and uh, he, he welcomed me with open arms and he, you know, he got Mickey involved. You know, mm-hmm. we got to do that. We haven't done the whole Gambino thing in a long time. And um, which is good to see after uh, it, was, it was definitely a, a fun thing to get to see you guys reunite. Yeah. I mean, I, I, listen, I always like tagging with Mick, you know, I mean, we're definitely a lot older, slower. Um, but, you know, there were some things that happened at RWA that mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I can have some personal opinions on all of it. Um, I had to take a little break from, from there. Uh, but while I was down there, it was fun. You mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, given a lot of leeway mm-hmm. to do what I wanted, you know, with the character. Um, also given a lot of instruction on how to act mm-hmm. um you know it, it's kind of one thing it's kind of funny with that is uh it got rdb let the old side of like my character kind of come back out which i haven't been able to do in a lot of years mm-hmm. um but you know it's so like everything it, times change mm-hmm. Um, maybe not the best, you know, what's best for business, I guess that's a common thing. 
you know, I, I don't know where it leads us. I, I can't say that I'm done with RWB. I still have a, a pretty good relationship, whether, you know, uh, it's a different, it's just, it's a different crowd down there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not trying to bash anybody I, I, it, down there. I mean, they, you know, Phil Bad and that crew have been very good to me. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do it forever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just, um, I have goals in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have stuff in the planning stages and, uh, you know, we'll see. I, as, as far as I had to be, see, I don't know that either. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the guard has changed, so to speak, there. And uh, it's been cool to see, though. Um, you know, speaking of the, the interview I had with Hentai uh, before this, like, it seems like you guys of that old guard of IWC and, and that, that I've, you know, seen over the years in, in indie wrestling have kind of rejuvenated a little bit, you know, whether it be through your appearances over there at RWA a little bit and, and bringing out. You know, both of you have talked about, like, you brought out parts of your character mm -hmm. you haven't been able to do for a long time or if ever. Um, and, and uh, you know, and, and hell, he's traveling more. Which yeah. Is, I yeah, never which remember is, him traveling. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, of course, you uh, you know, we've, we've talked at length about things that, you know, you're you're doing um, yeah. and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, is, is this kind of uh, interesting kind of uh, a second leg of your career? It feels like at this point. I don't call it a second leg. It's mm -hmm. more like the backside. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, it's no secret. I, I, I've told anybody that asks. I mean, I, I would like to. I plan on retiring in June of 2018 from in the ring. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that I'm done with wrestling. No, I'm just, you know, I, Things take a toll a little bit differently now, and mm -hmm. you know I and you have not held back. Well, every time I see you in there, especially with IWC, it's some kind of lockdown match or table match, or you're right. falling off a cage. <laughs> That's what I'm good at, though. Come on, man. <laughs> and going back to the superfly thing, right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, the old guard. There, I mean, to be honest with you. The old guard at IWC cares about IWC, mm -hmm. cares about the product. We spent a lot of years putting time in to keep it running. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not asking for anybody to thank us or kiss our ass, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of guys wrestling on IWC's roster right now. We wouldn't be wrestling if it wasn't for guys like me, Gory, Mickey, Hentai, Jimmy Vegas, DJ Z, it wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes I feel that it gets overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we're not asking for an award or pat on the back, but I'm a firm believer that you you respect the people that got you to the dance. There is no IWC dance with out guys like us and i don't care who the owner of the company is mm -hmm. you know my biggest thing with that is you know i understand that you have a new crowd and there's new guys coming up but you don't totally push out the old and just totally wipe them off the face of this earth they can serve a purpose um you know iwc is doing great and I'm happy for that, you know. But when you feel like, I guess you're being disrespected in a sense, you you look for other opportunities or other places or people that are um, interested mm -hmm. in what you're doing. And, and RWA has kind of helped that in a sense that, hey, you know what? Come over here. We can use you guys. You know, you can help out with some of our young talent. And that's what it is. And it's it's not like it's, oh, well, these guys, you know, there's been a couple times uh, that people have said, well, you guys are going over there because you're just trying to hurt IWC. It's not about hurting IWC. We're, we're the ones that fucking kept it running. Right. And, and I often I often say it's not even a competition. No. It, it's a whole different audience and a whole yeah. different product. Exactly. And, you know, the powers that be don't understand it or see that way. You know, in my head, 
everybody could work together in a sense mm -hmm. for the, the common goal. The common goal is to put on a good show, put people in, put asses in the seats, and like everybody have a good time. Mm -hmm. And if you can make some money off of it, great. I, I just think there's too many goddamn egos. Like, um, you know, you got three companies right now in this area that are running, and it's just like a big shit fest with each other. I mean, it really is. You know, you got Rise I that, that came on board, and I they're starting to do some good things. Um, you know, I, I just I sit back and I'm just like, it does it shouldn't be this way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's between the old guys, new guys, like things could work out for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I sit there and I'm just like, one thing if nothing else in wrestling in the 15 years that I've been involved, it's the same shit. Now that it was 15 years ago, nothing has changed on that level. Even with different people involved. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it's just like, you know, you guys here, you guys try new things, do new things. It's the same old shit there. And like, and that's, I'm not knocking, I'm not trying to knock the, the performers. Mm -hmm. It's just like, for the promoters and the owners, put your egos aside for two seconds. You know, talk it out, work it out. Yeah, there are some shady bastards, but it's wrestling. It's like a circus. Wrestling's always been shady. But you know what? You can all work together. You know what I mean? And there's there's room for everybody. You know, it's just, it's weird. You work for so long for a company, and then you're just like, oh, well. I got nothing. And then, and then you go over someplace like RWA. And you're like, well, holy shit, you just got a shot in the arm. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. You know, it's weird. Well, other than that, what uh, what are you watching these days as far as wrestling? What's kind of got your attention? Any up and comers <sighs> uh, uh, got your eye or anything like that? You know, I... I I, I, I like I told you earlier. I, I watch WB, mm. but I will watch a three-hour show in twenty minutes. You know, I always check out what, what Elias is doing. Um, you know, I like to watch AJ's matches and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I, I don't care for a lot of the other crap that goes on. Um, you know, indie-wise, uh, I watch Brit. You know, because you know, Hentai and I started her out in her training and. I like to see what she's doing. She's doing good things. Um, I like to honestly. I like to watch all the new guys. Like one thing that it got me is like um, I always like when we do like the uh, the Rural Valley shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of those new guys, I like to see them, see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, see how how they work. Because I remember being I I remember being like when we started out, man. Like you didn't get a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was. And that's been an amazing trip. Uh, I've had a lot of those new guys from this year on even. Yeah. And seeing them kind of, you know, getting that, you know, they, they're they having their goals of, I wanted to be in a match in court time. Yep. You know, or, or holy crap, I have a cage match with, you know, Lufisto six months into my career. Yep. Like that, that's that been a really cool aspect that is happening with that group over there with the new people yeah. getting opportunities. Yeah. Um, and I like to sit back, and like, you know, I, I don't, I don't train at school anymore, you know, but I always like to like give input, you mm -hmm. know, and because I did have, there was a few people when we were starting out that could, would give us input, but I wish there was more, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and cause you never, you're never done learning, you know, you're always learning something, but I like to watch the new guys and, um, you know, mainstream, like I said, I don't, I don't watch it now. And plus dude, mm -hmm. I got my hands in so many other little projects I got going on right. that, and I'll be honest with you, like, you know, wrestling's not, I got, I got two kids and, you know, they're in school now and I got my other businesses and, you know, my real job. It's just, I don't know, like, just go like this on the DVR all the time. <laughs> <laughs> as you do. Yeah. As you do. Yeah, definitely. Um, And, uh, well, I guess, you know, we touched on a lot of them, but, you know, if you could outline one or two things, what's the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling in your career? The best is meeting people. I mean, just 
you know, like I said, we we said on the other show earlier about the uh, like AJ Styles, like there are experiences like that that happen. Mm-hmm. They're just like you could you'll never forget. You know what I mean? Like that guy, like I said before, that guy doesn't have to know who I am, mm-hmm. but he remembered me. And I and I I said earlier too, you know, it's funny because uh, Britt when she did some dark work for WWE, she had seen. AJ and they were talking and he asked who trained her in, and you know, and she said Marshall and Gambino and super hentai. And he remembered who we were like, you know, and what I mean? this is last year. And, yeah. And, and, well, you know, he was last with the guys like three years ago. Yeah. But, like, but, but a, and a lot of the 2000s, a lot of the mid 2000s. Really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know that, I mean, that's the experiences me and people, mm-hmm. you know, even just like, it's crazy too. Cause like, you know, DJ Z comes back in mm-hmm. like, I don't talk to him a lot, but like when you see him, it's like you've been friends forever. Do you yep. know what I mean? Yep, so same here. And I look at uh, just going to the shows, man. Like you go to the shows and you see guys like every month. It like you wouldn't hang out with these guys a lot of time. You know, but wrestling kind of brings everybody together, and you're like one big family, maybe a dysfunctional family, but you're a family. You know what I mean? And it, it's cool. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the worst thing is just the egos and it's just nothing that has not changed i mean i, I don't know i i mean i don't i don't know if that ever will change you know everybody's trying to be the number one guy but it's fucking wrestling it's professional <laughs> wrestling it's it's a predetermined outcome you, you know what i mean like i i don't it's not like you're going to an mma match or a boxing match or like, it just, you don't need the egos. We're all there to have a good time, you know, and, and we all can work with each other. But some guys just, you know, they have to get this in or they have to do this or they can't lose to this guy. It's just, you know. And I think, too, a lot of this, too, is there's not enough storytelling like there used to be. I mean, I get there's crowds have changed and there is a niche for just matches without mm-hmm. no history but i still think you there's a spot for it you need you don't have to have the whole show on that but you need to you know tell some stories you know what i mean it's, it's corny for christ's sake you know but yeah that's that's my thoughts <laughs> marshall gambino is uh online marshall gambino on the twitters on the twitters on the facebooks yeah, i'm usually on the last twitters were fighting with southwest airlines yeah there's a lot of that too <laughs> i loved i like i love that you were fighting with them on your your gimmick and your shoot accounts <laughs> well it, it's like more people were actually and 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 one account has a much more intimidating look to it <laughs> well there's there's a reason for that yeah yeah <laughs> I, I mean you know i'm sitting there and i was sitting in the airport and i was getting so pissed off and i'm just thinking like you know what i gotta be careful because this could end up as like a you know federal crime or something you know you know what i mean because if i go if i go nuts with it i'm thinking like you know what dude is marshall like what the hell you, you, do you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i'm in character mm-hmm. but and then when they responded i was like oh here we go so You're, wait so southwest responded to marshall gambino's yeah they didn't, res- <laughs> they didn't respond to, to my my real account they responded to the the, the gimmick so account. not not family man real no life. no the marshall, no, yeah. marshall the bull game they were worried the mafia was after him uh, I, I guess <laughs> man but they, i was because I, I just threw it out there and i'm like yeah, they're never going to respond. And they respond and they responded a couple times. That's the best part. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, finally, when we when I got home, you know, landed in Pittsburgh, I was like, you know what, Southwest, we're just consider this as a bad date. We'll go our separate ways. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for uh, getting me home. You yeah. know. I was just so pissed off. I haven't been pissed off in a long time. I just imagine that rep, that that PR rep at Southwest, that's seeing your account and sees like a couple tweets down. Because I remember a couple weeks ago, I, or actually, it was, I think it was the last Royal Valley. I remember explicitly seeing that tweet. It's like ready to punch people in the face tonight. Well, it doesn't help uh, that I got the sauna club. Did you did you read some of that? No, I didn't. <laughs> they were tweeting to Southwest too. Like I'm like, oh, and they're fuck. not going to pull any punches. Oh, oh no, no, no. It was uh, it was shooting straight from the hip, man. Yeah, there, there's a reason they're the most blocked in uh, Mayhem Show history. Hey, <laughs> and now probably Southwest history. I yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I haven't been that mad since that uh, 
RWA incident. So, <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I like to say that I'm a nice guy for the most part. Mm-hmm. For the most part. But I thought, I thought Mickey was the nice guy. Well, you haven't you haven't <laughs> talked to Mickey in a while, have you? Like, yeah. you know, Mickey's briefly. A, hey, man, he's a you know, I don't get to see him as much as I'd like to. I mean, he's mm. he's living in Raleigh and he's doing his thing, and you know, he uh, he comes back to town for art every day when he can. And mm-hmm. but uh, you know that that's kind of the shitty thing is like, you know he's moved away so you don't get to see him as much like i don't see jimmy demarco as much anymore because jimmy's not really in re- in the wrestling world anymore mm-hmm. um you know so you make different friends you hang out with different people but it's just i don't know there's the guys that used to be that you, you don't you see all the time you don't a lot of them you don't see anymore and i don't know it's just you know like this show i haven't been here in like 10 10, 20 years, it feels like, <laughs> you know. We'll have to, to change that. We'll have to get you on here, and maybe you'll wear the Enzo hair next time. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> no, no. God, no. Oh, just just look at a Wrestling Mayhem show. What was it? Uh, uh, 593 uh, from earlier tonight, and, and just watch the glances he's giving Chad the Enzo. It was pretty yeah, you great got, to watch all night. You got your own three-ring circus here. You don't need, <laughs> I mean, you don't need us. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it's just one of the things. Like I said, I'm I'm wrapping up. Like I said, June 2018s mm-hmm. when I plan on being done. You know, um, got some things that. I, I, here's the thing. My new venture. When it finally goes, I'll come back here and I'll I'll tell everybody about it, and we can go from there. But. That's not finalized yet. And we'll so. see about the Enzo hair. <laughs> fucking Enzo hair. <laughs> it's been a thing lately. Um, but uh, no, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. I've been a long time uh, a friend of the show. I really appreciate it. Always good seeing you at whatever three lettered uh, event we end up at. <laughs> so, and also the tonight, and by the time this goes up, it's probably going to be well, hopefully on your your waist. Over your shoulder. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> after this, so. you got you do have right there. Uh, hold that up there for the camera. The IWC High Stakes Championship. There we talked go. a little bit on Mayhem Show about this. Uh, 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 tell us briefly the uh, history of this title. So uh, this used to be a, a title IWC had. Uh, it was actually before my time. I believe it was two thousand one, two thousand two, somewhere around there. Um, basically, the title was uh, defended only with stipulations uh whether that was you know a, a ladder match or a, a four-way or whatever um and uh it kind of got retired uh after a couple of years um and recently idbc just decided to bring it back it is a chance for instance it was first won by shirley doe in a falls count anywhere battle go. royal you looking that up <laughs> Yeah, I just looked up the title history. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on there. It's on the website. Yeah, check it out. When was it? Two thousand. Uh, that would be March in two thousand one. It yeah. started uh, through March of two thousand two. Yeah, yeah, for about a year. And Boomer Payne was the last champion, right? Yeah. yeah. So they decided to bring it back, and uh, is a way for uh, an opportunity for mid card guys to, um, you know work towards something and uh I, I think it's uh a great idea it also you know for me too because i you know i'm an old guy and i like nostalgia um it's a good way to bring up some of the reintroduce some of the iwc's history and uh this friday wheeling alley casino will uh, crown a new champion so there you go and uh, if you if you miss out on that, you're not in the area, or you're catching this afterwards, uh, that will also be available on DVD and digital download over at Indie Wrestling dot us and smart mark video uh so please go check that out thank you again marshall for joining us hey man anytime <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> hopefully a lot sooner you'll be joining That's, us again uh, yeah it's all good yeah we're getting some old other friends old old friends of the show on lately he's like pulling said, them all out of the, yeah, out right. the woodwork that's right hey you guys keep working and uh <laughs> oh, dude listen we'll, we'll be willing them in here in wheelchairs there you soon. go there you go we do have a ramp now uh <laughs> oh, jesus <laughs> I just want to be invited back for that big that big 
drinking party you guys have. The, the uh, STD Christmas special. Uh, that's, you want to be a part of it. I, I think I need to be because I've heard so many good things about that. Like December 12th. Is that what it is? December 12th this year. Oh, shit. Get ready for it. Mark it on your calendar. Is he bringing the potato chips? I don't know. Oh, man. You have no idea. I hope he finds some of that Thailand beer because that was amazing last time. So, yeah. He might he might bring some things from Thailand you don't want to bring. Oh, <laughs> no, I already saw some things in Thailand I didn't want to bring back in my head. So, uh, thank you so much. Check them out. And check out the other interviews over at Indie, uh, Indie I'm sorry, IndieWrestling.us and WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Indie Mayhem Show on all those places and all of your uh, podcast outlets. Uh, thank you so much to our awesome. G- nope, that's a different tagline. Thank you to our guests. Thank you to our chat room. See you guys next time. Until then, support indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.